Hello, and welcome to another video. Today, I will be taking you on a tour of my Adrix and Nev Twincasters EDH deck. I will be reading through every card in the deck, explaining the overall strategy, and talking through some of the decisions that I made along the way. Let's get started. So, for a little bit of background, this started out as the Quantum Quandrix Precon from Strixhaven, which I have modified. At this time, I have replaced 24 cards in the 99. However, that does not include any adjustments to the lands. And although I know that the lands are very important, I still need to reevaluate the balance of green versus blue after my modifications and update the land base accordingly. But that said, there is a link in this video's description to an MTG Goldfish page with my deck list as it stands right now, if you would like to take a look. So the overall theme of this deck is token creation. At the time, I had already been contemplating creating a populate-themed deck, so this was definitely right up my alley. So I went ahead and picked up this deck and played it through a few times without any modification to get a feel for how the deck played and exactly what it wanted to do and then began thinking about ways that I wanted to make adjustments. Most of what I've done to adjust the deck list is taking the theme of creature tokens and then really running with it. I've taken out most things that didn't feed directly into the theme of being able to flood the board with creature tokens. Originally, this deck kind of seemed like it had a little bit of a sub-theme that branched off of the types of creature tokens that it creates. Several of the cards created these 0, zero fractal creature tokens with plus one plus one counters on them, and I kind of wanted to move away from these creatures where possible. Um, there's definitely still some in here, but I didn't want to muddy the waters with having to focus on trying to grow creatures with plus one plus one counters on them, especially since I already have two EDH decks that really focus on that type of thing. And so I really wanted to make sure that this deck focuses only on creating as many creature tokens as possible. And if some of those creatures are still zero zero fractals that need plus one plus one counters then that's okay but optimizing for making those creatures as big as possible is not really my focus here so yeah that's where i landed to summarize i guess this deck wants to flood the board with creature tokens and it does that by using spells and creatures that generate creature tokens, and also effects that double the number of creature tokens and can stack, so that we're generating two to four times as many tokens as we would otherwise. And then effects that make the tokens really big and can just overrun our opponents. So I'll explain some more card-specific things as we go through the deck. But to start, let's take a look at our commander. It is Adrix and Nev Twincasters. Two, green, blue, for a two, two. Legendary creature, merfolk wizard. Ward, two. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, Twice that many of those tokens are created instead. So, 
Like I just mentioned, this is one of those doubling effects that we want to employ anytime that we are creating creature tokens so that we can get twice as many. Um, and so having this effect on our commander is really useful since it gives access to this effect anytime we have our commander. All right. So next, I will go through the rest of the creatures in the deck. Jahira, friend of the forest. Two, green, for a two, three. Legendary creature, human, elf, druid. Tokens you control have tap, add green. Choose a background. So the background ability isn't really applicable here, but she does give your creature tokens a little extra ability or any other type of token for that matter, to convoke out any of your other spells. Curiosity Crafter 3 blue for a 3-3 three, three. creature Bird Wizard. Flying. You have no maximum hand size. Whenever a creature token you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So, nice little creature here. Again, gives an extra ability to your token creatures, which is nice. Casido, Orochi, Archmage. One, green, blue, for a two, two. Legendary creature, snake, wizard. Green, blue. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. If that creature is a snake, it gets plus two, plus two, until end of turn. This one I've kept in here essentially to be a repeatable rogue's passage. That second ability doesn't really do anything unless it's targeting itself. I've left it in here because the ability to make your creatures unblockable is still pretty good. But I would be open to replacing this card if I can find something better. Junk Winder. Five blue blue for a five six. Creature Serpent. Affinity for tokens. Whenever a token enters the battlefield under your control, tap target nonland permanent an opponent controls. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. So, hopefully it's pretty inexpensive for you to cast, and then can freeze down your opponent's things as you continue to play more tokens. Avenger of Zendikar Five, green, green, for a five, five. Creature, elemental. When a vendor of Zendikar enters the battlefield, put a zero, one, green, 
green plant creature token onto the battlefield for each land you control. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may put a plus one plus one counter on each plant creature you control. Pretty self-explanatory one, hopefully having your commander or a similar ability out lets you create a lot of plants. Scoot Swarm. Two green for a 1-1 one, one. creature, insect. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 one, one green insect creature token. If you control six or more lands, create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. So yeah, this one hopefully gets out of hand pretty quickly. Hornet Queen. Four, green, green, green. For a two, two, creature, insect. Flying, death touch. When Hornet Queen enters the battlefield, create four, one, one, green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch. Hornet Nest. Two green for a zero two. Creature, insect. Defender. Whenever Hornet Nest is dealt damage, create that many one one green insect creature tokens with flying and death touch. So Hopefully this one can just get in the way of something really big and explode into a bunch of hornets. Terastodon. Six green green for a nine nine. Creature elephant. When Terastodon enters the battlefield, you may destroy up to three target non-creature permanents. For each permanent put into a graveyard this way, its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green elephant creature token. So this is useful for both blowing up your opponent's things, Depending on what they have going on, maybe they have a planeswalker or powerful enchantment or artifact that you want to get rid of. Or you could even turn some excess land or something that you have just sitting around that's not a creature into uh, some elephants. Coma, Cosmos Serpent. Three, green, green, blue, blue. For a six, six, legendary creature, serpent. This spell can't be countered. At the beginning of each upkeep, create a three, three, blue serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. Sacrifice another serpent. Choose one. Tap target permanent. Its activated abilities can't be activated this turn. 
Coma Cosmos Serpent Gains Indestructible Until End of Turn. So good way to make sure that you are reliably pumping out creature tokens turn after turn. And pretty handy that its own tokens can make sure that this creature is indestructible. Unfortunately, they are serpents instead of snakes, so the Orochi Archmage that we saw earlier can't give them plus two plus two, since that only applies to snakes. Gazandu Tusk Collar. One green for a one one. Creature, human, shaman. Level up, one green. Levels two through five. Tap, create a three three green elephant creature token. Level six plus. Tap, create two three three green elephant creature tokens. Reform three blue for a zero one creature worm. When Reform dies, create a 3-3 blue fish creature token with When this creature dies, create a 6-6 blue whale creature token with When this creature dies, create a 9-9 blue kraken creature token. So hopefully when we have this creature out, we have at least one doubling effect and ideally multiple stacked doubling effects, so that we can get a ton of large creatures off of it. Rampaging Bayloths. Four green green for a six six creature Beast, trample, landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 4-4 green beast creature token. Spawning Kraken. Five blue for a six six creature kraken. Whenever a kraken, leviathan, octopus, or serpent you control deals combat damage to a player, create a nine nine blue kraken creature token. This pairs nicely with the kraken that we get at the end of reform as well as the other few serpents that we have in here. And I love that this creature generates a ton of massive krakens for us. Desolation Twin 10 for a 10-10 creature Eldrazi. When you cast this spell, create a 10-10 colorless Eldrazi creature token. Hydra Broodmaster. Four Green, green, for a seven, seven. Creature, Hydra. X, X, green, monstrosity, X. 
When Hydra Broodmaster becomes monstrous, Creed X, XX, Green Hydra Creature Tokens. Dika Fractal Theorist. Four blue for a three three legendary creature, human wizard. Magecraft. Whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, create a zero zero green and blue fractal creature token. Put X plus one plus one counters on it, where X is that spell's mana value. Three blue target creature token can't be blocked this turn. So here's an instance of those fractal creature tokens that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And, uh, yeah, I mostly kept this creature in here because of the activated ability, especially since it doesn't tap to activate. I can do it as many times as I have mana for. So the intention is to be able to use this for creatures that we want to be able to do damage to players for, whether it's because they're really big or if there's another benefit. Like in the instance of the spawning kraken, we get more krakens every time a kraken can deal combat damage to a player. So this is just a way to help our creature tokens get through. Essex, Fractal Bloom. Four, green, blue, for a four, four. Legendary creature, Fractal. Flying. The first time you would create one or more tokens during each of your turns, you may instead choose a creature other than Essex Fractal Bloom and create that many tokens that are copies of that creature. So this one is pretty interesting and has definitely been a favorite of mine. Instead of creating maybe a 1-1 or a 3-3 vanilla token from something, you can instead copy the best creature on the board, whether it's yours or your opponent's. Maybe one that has a good ETB effect, even though this only works the first time you would create a token on your turn, you could still manage to create a lot of creatures off of this if you have maybe like a Hornet Queen or something like that. And a good partner for that card is Progenitor Mimic. Four, green, blue, for a zero, zero, creature, shapeshifter. You may have progenitor mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it gains at the beginning of your upkeep. If this creature isn't a token, put a token onto the battlefield. That's a copy of this creature. So, sort of along the same lines as Essex, you can copy anything that's on the battlefield. Except this one will continue to create copies of itself and um, sort of has an interesting dynamic with Essex since you can reroute the way that the tokens get created. So yeah, really fun card. And a lot of battlefield shenanigans can go on here. And then our last creature is Giant Adifage. Five 
green, green for a seven, seven. Creature, insect. Trample, whenever giant adifage deals combat damage to a player, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of giant adifage. Another one that is pretty easy to exploit with the token doubling effects. If you get through even once, you're just off and running, creating multiple, multiple 7-7s seven per turn. As long as you can get the combat damage through. So yeah, that is it for the creatures. Next up, we have instants and sorceries. Alright, so now we are on to the spells. First up are the land ramp cards, starting with rampant growth. One green for a sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle. Cultivate, two green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards and put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Kodama's Reach. Pretty much the same thing. Two green for a sorcery arcane. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one onto the battlefield tapped and the other into your hand. Then shuffle. Nissa's Expedition. Four green for a sorcery. Convoke. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So this one's a bit more expensive, but all of the creature tokens can help you cast it and it's good for a little extra landfall, which is nice. Urban Evolution 3. Green-Blue for a Sorcery Draw 3 cards. You may play an additional land this turn. Golden Ratio. One green blue for a sorcery. Draw a card for each different power among creatures you control. Shamanic Revelation. Three green green for a sorcery. Draw a card for each creature you control. Ferocious. You gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater.
Return of the Wild Speaker. Four green for an instant. Choose one. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. Non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until end of turn. So those were a handful of card draw spells for the deck. Biomass Mutation X Hybrid Green-Blue Hybrid Green-Blue For an instant Creatures you control have base power and toughness, XX until end of turn. Right of Replication 2 Blue Blue for a Sorcery Kicker 5 Create a token that's a copy of target creature. If this spell was kicked, create five of those tokens instead. Theoretical duplication. Two blue for an instant. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under an opponent's control this turn, create a token that's a copy of that creature. So, always fun to be able to copy your opponent's creatures. Arenicus's Vile Duplication 3 blue for a sorcery Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control Except the token has flying and isn't legendary if that creature is legendary So Always good to have spells that can remove the legendary keyword when you're copying creatures. Full Flowering XX Green for a Sorcery Populate X Times Good mana sync here to flood the board with even more tokens. Stolen Identity 4 blue blue for a sorcery. Put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target artifact or creature. Cipher. Second Harvest. Two green green for an instant. For each token you control, put a token onto the battlefield. That's a copy of that permanent. Quasi-duplicate. One blue blue for a sorcery. Create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Jumpstart. Incubation and Incongruity 
Incubation is hybrid green-blue for a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. And incongruity is one green-blue for an instant. Exile target creature. That creature's controller creates a 3-3 green frog lizard creature token. So this is the start of the removal spells here, most of which are pretty similar. And the intention is that you could downgrade one of your opponent's creatures by turning it into a vanilla token or being able to use it on your own creatures and hopefully you have access to at least one doubling effect. You could create multiple creatures with just the one spell. Rapid hybridization. Blue for an instant. Destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. That creature's controller creates a 3-3 green frog lizard creature token. Pongify. Blue for an instant. Destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Its controller creates a 3 3 green ape creature token. Beast. Within, two green for an instant. Destroy target permanent. Its controller creates a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Important to note that this one can get any type of permanent. Curse of the Swine. X, blue, blue, for a sorcery. Exile X target creatures. For each creature exiled this way, its controller creates a 2 2 green boar creature token. Azuri's Predation. Five green, green, green for a sorcery. For each creature your opponents control, create a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token. Each of those beasts fights a different one of those creatures. Perplexing test. Three blue blue for an instant. Choose one. Return all creature tokens to their owner's hands. Return all non-token creatures to their owner's hands. So hopefully depending on what your opponents are playing, this could function sort of as a board wipe for you where you can get rid of all non-token creatures and then just leave all your creature tokens remaining. Crozen Grip. Two green 
for an instant. Split second. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. And that will do it for the instants and sorceries. Next up are the artifacts. All right, so now we are on to the artifacts, starting of course with Soul Ring, one for an artifact, tap, add two colorless. Arcane Signet, two for an artifact, tap, add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Simic Signet, two for an artifact. One, tap, add green, blue. Essica's Chariot. Three, green, for a four, four. Legendary artifact, vehicle. When Essica's Chariot enters the battlefield, create two, 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 green cat creature tokens. Whenever Essica's chariot attacks, create a token that's a copy of target token you control. Crew, four. So, great vehicle here that both creates tokens and copies them. Chitter Spitter. Two green for an artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may sacrifice a token. If you do, put an acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. Squirrels you control get plus one plus one for each acorn counter on Chitter Spitter. Green tap. Create a 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature token. Very cute card. Mostly here for the ability to create tokens at will. If we wanted to, we could angle for trying to put as many acorn counters on this as possible. And having some giant squirrel tokens. And if we can reroute this through Essex, which we talked about back in the creatures section, um allows you to reroute your first instance of creating tokens per turn and have it copy anything on the battlefield instead. So, pretty efficient use of mana if we can pull that off. Geometric Nexus. Two for an artifact. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell, put a number of charge counters on Geometric Nexus equal to that spell's mana value. 6. Tap. Remove all charge counters from Geometric Nexus. Create a 0-0 zero, zero, green and blue fractal creature token. Put X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it where X is the number of charge counters removed this way. So this one depends a bit on the other decks that you are playing against in your playgroup, because the activated ability is quite expensive, 
and the payoff might not be that good. I was a little bit on the fence about this card, but if you are playing with people who are much more spell heavy, this ended up being quite good, at least in my playgroup, and in some cases was even kind of my MVP, where I could activate it pretty reliably for large creatures, and as long as you're really paying attention and getting your counters on there, yeah, I actually like this card a lot more than I thought. Combine Chrysalis. Green, blue, for an artifact. Creature tokens you control have flying. Two, green, blue, tap. Sacrifice a token. Create a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token. Activate only as a sorcery. Yeah, um important effect here to give all your creature tokens flying. And then the activated ability serves to upgrade some of your creature tokens. This pairs really well with Chitter Spitter, where you can generate 1-1 one -one squirrels and then put them through the combined chrysalis and make some 4-4s. Four um, and as is the theme with this deck, if you can double or triple up on that, then that's a pretty good deal. Panharmonicon. Four, for an artifact. If an artifact or creature entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So the intention behind including this card was to be able to double up on creatures that bring tokens with them when they enter the battlefield, but the use case on this ended up being much more narrow than I had anticipated. I think right now it's pretty much just Avenger of Zendikar and Hornet Queen, and then maybe a couple things have triggered abilities like um, Junkwinder, but yeah, I don't know. It's going to be the first one up on the chopping block, I think. And then this deck's only equipment, Helm of the Host, four for a legendary artifact, equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature, except the token isn't legendary. If the equipped creature is legendary, that token gains haste. Equip, five. Again, a good token generator and a really nice way to get around creatures being legendary. Um, pretty backbreaking if I can get this onto my commander. And yeah, one of those things that kind of demands to be dealt with. That is all for artifacts. Next up, we have enchantments. All right, so now we are on to the enchantments. First up, we have Paradox Zone. Four green for an enchantment. Paradox Zone enters the battlefield with a growth counter on it. At the beginning of your end step, double the number of growth counters on Paradox Zone. Then create a zero, 0 green and blue 
fractal creature token. Put x plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, where x is the number of growth counters on Paradox Zone. So here's another instance of those fractal creature tokens. But this is a good way to make sure that we are putting fractal creature tokens onto the battlefield every turn, and it can escalate pretty quickly. Extravagant Replication Four, blue, blue, four, an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of another target non-land permanent you control. This one is nice that you can copy any of your non-land permanents. It doesn't have to be a creature, although it can be. So, for example, if you wanted another Paradox Zone, you could certainly do that or one of your artifacts, or get another enchantment that has one of the token doubling effects. Primal Vigor Four green, four an enchantment. If one or more tokens would be created, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. If one or more plus one plus one counters would be put on a creature, twice that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. Not too much to add to this one. Um, this is pretty much the deck's entire strategy. Although this one doesn't affect just you, uh, it can be for anyone, so you need to be a little bit careful about that. Parallel Lives 3 Green 4 An Enchantment if an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control, it puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. So again, basically this deck's entire strategy, and this one does only affect you. So that was it for enchantments. And perhaps conspicuously there was no doubling season in there. I just didn't have another one that wasn't already in use. So as soon as I pick one up, I'm definitely putting it straight in here. And probably just one for one, replacing that Panharmonicon. Next up, we are on to the Planeswalkers. All right, so now we are on to the Planeswalkers, of which there are just two. Garrick, Primal Hunter. Two, green, green, green. For a three loyalty, legendary Planeswalker, Garuk. Plus one. Create a three, three, Green Beast Creature Token. Minus three. Draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Minus six. Create a six six green worm creature token for each land you control. Every ability here is pretty useful and quite overwhelming if we can manage to ultimate him. The 
Vivian Monsters Advocate. Three green green for a three loyalty. Legendary Planeswalker, Vivian. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Plus one. Create a 3-3 three, three green beast creature token. Put your choice of a vigilance counter, a reach counter, or a trample counter on it. Minus two. When you cast your next creature spell this turn, search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Really nice way to reach forward into our library a little bit for creatures. And she creates creature tokens for us as well. So that was all for Planeswalkers. Next up, we have lands. All right, so now we are on to the lands, and as I mentioned at the top of the video, I don't think I've made any changes in the lands away from the pre-con deck list, so I know that there is some tuning up that needs to happen here. I definitely need to make sure that the lands support the distribution of green and blue in the deck. I also want to add in a breeding pool, maybe a tangled islet, maybe even a misty rainforest, since we have a little bit of landfall going on in here. Maybe an alchemist's refuge would be nice, and probably a couple other things, but yeah, I'll just go through what we have here. Command tower, land, tap. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. Exotic Orchard. Land. Tap. Add one mana of any color that a land an opponent controls could produce. Opal Palace. Land. Tap. Add colorless. One. Tap. Add one mana of any color in your commander's color identity. If you spend this mana to cast your commander, it enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it, equal to the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. Study Hall. Land. Tap. Add colorless. One. Tap. Add one mana of any color. When you spend this mana to cast your commander, scry X, where X is the number of times it's been cast from the command zone this game. Tranquil Thicket. Land. Tranquil Thicket enters the battlefield tapped. Tap. Add green. Cycling. Green. Mosswort Bridge. Land. Hide away. Tap. Add green. Green. Tap. You may play the exiled card without paying its mana cost. 
if creatures you control have total power 10 or greater. Orin Reef the Vastwood Land Orin Reef the Vastwood enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add green. Tap, put a plus one plus one counter on each green creature that entered the battlefield this turn. Lanawar Reborn Land Lanawar Reborn enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add green. Graft, one. Novagen, Heart of Progress. Land, tap, add colorless. Green, blue, tap. Put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that entered the battlefield this turn. Lonely Sandbar. Land, Lonely Sandbar enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add blue. Cycling, blue. Lumbering Falls. Land, Lumbering Falls enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, Add green or blue. Two, green, blue. Lumbering Falls becomes a 3-3 three, three, green and blue elemental creature with hexproof until end of turn. It's still a land. Quandrix Campus Land, Quandrix Campus enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add green or blue. Four, tap, scry one. Yavamaya Coast. Land, tap, Add colorless. Tap, add green or blue. Yavamaya Coast deals one damage to you. Temple of Mystery. Land. Temple of Mystery enters the battlefield tapped. When Temple of Mystery enters the battlefield, scry one. Tap, add green or blue. Simic Growth Chamber Land Simic Growth Chamber enters the battlefield tapped. When Simic Growth Chamber enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Tap, add green, blue. Blighted Woodland Land Tap, add colorless. Three, green, tap. Sacrifice Blighted Woodland. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle.
Myriad Landscape Land Myriad Landscape enters the battlefield tapped Two Tap Sacrifice Myriad Landscape Search your library for up to two basic land cards that share a land type. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Rogue's Passage Land Tap Add Colorless Four Tap Target creature can't be blocked this turn. Temple of the False God Land Tap Add two colorless Activate only if you control Five or more lands and then the rest of these are just basic lands, so I will flip through those now. And there we have it. Thank you so much for joining me today for this look around my Adrix and Nev Twin Casters EDH deck. I really appreciate you sticking with me today. Go ahead and leave me a comment with your thoughts, or if this is a commander that you play, I'm curious to know what your deck looks like. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.